Hello from LPL Financial. Welcome to The Talking Point. I'm your host, Quincy Crosby. Good morning, everyone. This is Quincy Crosby. It is Monday morning, November 27th, and this is The Talking Point. Thanks so much for joining me. We have had a tremendous rally in the markets in the U.S., four-week rally. You know, you usually look for a pause. You look for consolidation. And how about this? After Thanksgiving, the digestion of those gains. It's been a, a market that has defied expectations. And one other thing I want to add here is this. There's been a call over and over again. You always hear it. We need broader participation in the market, right? Because again, it, this rally has been led by, yes, the big seven, uh, the big seven big tech names called the Magnificent Seven. Also, the rally has been based on a no that the Fed is finished raising rates and that rate cuts are coming sometime in 2024. Uh, the average uh, estimate projections have that rate cuts are probably going to come by mid-2024, although there have been those who are convinced that the economy is going to slow down in, in a dramatic way and that the Fed may have to lower rates earlier, uh, even some are saying perhaps even uh, in the summer or the late spring. These are all projections. Now, the other side of this is, well, wait a minute, the economy seems to be holding up. Uh, consumers are spending. This is where you get into a scenario of, uh, is the Fed finished? Uh, can the Fed actually stay higher for longer? Or is that is that just a mantra that they keep over and over again stating, hoping that the, that the market believes them? It's a tug of war, I would have to say, between what the market is saying and what the Fed is actually telegraphing. This week, there's going to be another round of Fed speakers. And I want to call attention to the fact that Powell, Jerome Powell, is going to be speaking this week. We want to hear what he has to say, obviously. But also, tomorrow, the Fed Governor Christopher Waller is going to be speaking according to the schedule put out by the Fed. I pay attention to him. He is what I would call a pragmatic hawk. He just basically comes out and obviously he says what he thinks, but the point is he tends to be pragmatic about it. And we want to hear what he has to say, uh, and that will be tomorrow. Similarly, I want to pay attention as well on Wednesday, and that is when the head of the Cleveland Fed, Loretta Mester, is going to speak. The reason I focus on uh, Dr. Mester is that she is due to retire from her position. I mean, not, not that she's retiring after she leaves, but there's a certain time element allowed. But she is in the hawkish camp, and she speaks her mind. Uh, sometimes she goes along with the Fed. She has actually recently, she said, yeah, we, we want to proceed carefully. Uh, the market has taken that word carefully to say, well, that's what the word the Fed uses when they're finished. Actually, sometimes the Fed gets deeper and uses the word patient, that we will be patient. Just what they did in January of 2019, that the, where the market turned around when Chairman Powell made a comment uh, deliberately that the Fed will be patient. Remember, in 2018, in December, the Fed made it clear that they were not only raising rates at their December meeting, but that there would be rate hikes in next year in 2019. His use of the word that they would be patient changed the direction of the markets, obviously, and direction of, of rates. So the point that I want to make here is she's leaving. She usually speaks her mind. She has recently telegraphed along with the rest of the Fed that they would be careful. Let's see what she has to say on Wednesday when she speaks about 1 o'clock, 1.45, 2 o'clock uh, Eastern time. It's going to be important because she has been a very decisive economist in terms of 
how she sees the underlying economy and more importantly, the inflation in the economy and whether the Fed needs to do more. I think that's going to be important. A lot of folks are paying attention to what Loretta Mester has to say this week. In addition this week, what we have is we have a full range of economic data starting uh, today with new home sales. We've seen uh, home related activity slow down the recent data coming in slowing down. We're going to have the uh, K. Schiller Home Price Index, which actually has been in positive territory as prices throughout the country with homes being sold actually inch higher. Consumer confidence is going to come in. The expectations, by the way, is that consumer confidence may dip down. But remember, there are many consumer confidence reports. This is one that the market is paying attention to. And as I said, a lot of Fed speak, particularly tomorrow on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we are going to get the first revision for the GDP report for the third quarter. Remember, that came in at 4.9%. And the expectations are that it may just stay there without a a major revision. So we're going to see what that portends. And again, at 2 o'clock, we'll have the Fed Beige Book. Now, I always say this, a lot of folks don't pay any attention to the Beige Book. But when you're looking at a transition period for the economy and looking to see is it slowing down in a meaningful way or is it accelerating, what the Beige Book provides is a pretty much up-to-date picture of the regions in the United States. And they're it's anecdotal, but more and more you'll hear many of the uh, Fed speakers actually point to anecdotes as opposed to these surveys that we continually get. But this is one where we they speak to banks, they speak to business owners, and you get a broad picture, particularly in the words that continue across the country. So if they all say things are moderating, you'll hear it throughout the country. And that gives you a signal of, wait a minute, they all seem to be saying this versus, well, we see an acceleration. That's what we will be looking for in the Beige Book. And again, as I said, uh, Dr. Loretta Mester will will be speaking uh, on Wednesday, and we want to hear what she has to say. Now, also, we're going to pay even more attention on Thursday to the initial jobless claims. And the reason for this is we saw a jump in those claims. Now, obviously, it could be associated, and at least some of it was associated, with the strike from the United Auto Workers. But this is important because if that report on Thursday morning signals and not tick in those initial claims. The market has to pay attention to it that we are starting to see the beginning of the labor market slowing down in a more meaningful way. Similarly, we're looking for the continuing claims that also comes out on Thursday morning. So we will pay attention. And I'm saying we, the market will be paying attention and particularly the treasury yields. Pay attention to the 10-year treasury yield this week with all of the data that uh, will be released uh, because the 10-year treasury yield inched a bit higher and it came off of a level that was basically, you know, support, a level that had been support. So we're going to watch to see if that 10-year treasury yield remains anchored or does it continue to rise. The market is obsessed about that, as we all know, and the lower yields helped also underpin this market rally, this four-week market rally. But overall on Thursday, which is the day that we are all watching, we are also going to have the Personal Consumption Expenditures Index. That's the PCE. That report, as everyone knows by now, is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. And what we're going to be looking to see is whether or not the core or what we call the super core, actually starts pulling back. The consensus estimates, by the way, is that we will see a bit of a pullback. That is exactly what the market wants to see and what the market needs to see, because that really helped. If you go back on the charts and look at that consumer price index report that came out, it really helped turn this market dramatically, along with, by the way, the notion that the Fed is is 
offered a dovish pivot, quote unquote, along with the Treasury agency coming out and saying, well, we'll have less supply in, in, in the auctions. That really helped set the stage. But actually, so did these numbers from the Consumer Price Index, the CPI. Now we will get the core PCE index, and that will drill down there and go into the super core. Very important for this market rally. And then also we will get something that I also think is extremely important given that consumers continue to spend. Uh, we will get the on Thursday, November 30th, we'll get the personal income and personal spending. The reason this is important is we have seen a kind of back and forth with these numbers. What you don't want to see is that personal income is going down, but personal spending is going up. That we don't want to see, and we've seen that over a couple of weeks, and then come back into a realignment of both of them kind of realigned with one another. This is important because we are seeing consumer spending all of the concern over whether or not holiday spending was going to go down, down, down. Let me put it this way. Even on Thanksgiving, yeah, I'm finished cleaning up, finished. Oh, everyone's watching the games. But guess what? Americans were online ordering whatever they wanted for the holiday in the evening of Thanksgiving. We have those numbers coming in. In addition, more and more spending online. And then today, uh, Cyber Monday, the expectations are even more buying online. So this is going to be important because it defies the expectations that consumers were just, oh, you know, we're tapped out, we're wiped out. The important thing here is ultimately whether or not we see a steady movement in consumer spending, but not with the uh, credit cards. Obviously, if you're online, you're going to use your credit cards because we're seeing an uptick in late payments. We're seeing an uptick in delinquencies, particularly amongst lower wage earners. And this is key. We have to remember in our large country, those folks who have jobs that pay well are keeping up with their expenses, but also they are tending to um, spend more. So we're going to pay attention very much to this personal income and personal spending uh, data coming out. Again, what we're looking for, and this is why it's important, we want to see an imbalance. We don't want to see personal spending up, but personal income coming down. So also uh, what we're going to be looking for on Friday, and remember, yes, this is the first Friday in the month, but we will not have the labor report. That will come next week. But we will be, see the ISM, Institute for Supply Management, report on manufacturing. We watch these reports particularly. We want to see is there a turn, even if it's negative, even if it's below 50, which remember is that line in the sand between ex expansion and deceleration, contraction, we want to see if there's a turn. And we're looking for something else, new orders. We want to see that tick higher and we want to see expectations for hiring pick up. Last but not least on this and why it's important is that we saw reports regarding manufacturing pull back as the United Auto Workers uh, strike continued longer than expectations uh, because orders just stopped coming in for the whole supply chain. So we we'll want to see if, if this is starting to show a meaningful turn. And we'll also see construction spending. So there's an awful lot for the market to digest. But again, I'm going to pay attention to what Waller, Christopher Waller has to say, Fed speaker, pragmatic hawk, and also Loretta Mester, Dr. Loretta Mester, what she has to say, and of course, Jerome Powell. What is he going to tell us that the market has missed and what the market, uh, you know, simply doesn't know? And then also we're going to obviously pay very close attention to this core PCE and the super core, personal consumption expenditures index. If this comes in and it shows a meaningful decline at the pace of inflation coming down a bit stronger at a quicker pace, this is a catalyst for the market. The market is very keenly focus on this. And again, how does it translate into that 10 year treasury yield, whether or not it pulls back or does it still inch higher? 
Very important because remember what we're looking for. We're looking to see if that treasury market sees something else in terms of inflation, different scenarios in terms of inflation. So this week is extraordinarily important overall for the market. We're going to pay attention, but keep in mind, this market may be due for that digestion, that pause, that consolidation of an short-term overbought market that needs to pull back before, yes, before a, another rally can build and, and really give us that uh, end of the year move. For those who are still on this line, let me give you something I think that is important. Over the past 40 years, in the month of December, 76% of the time, over the past 40 years in December, the market has trended higher, ended the year in positive in the green. So I just keep that in mind. The positives outweigh the negatives in terms of moving toward the end of the year. But remember, too, we'd like to see this market just have a pause, refresh, and then start the build for the end of the year. Thank you so much. Have a very good week. I appreciate your listening to the call. This material was prepared by LPL Financial. It's for general information only and is not intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. There is no assurance that the views or strategies discussed are suitable for all investors or will yield positive outcomes. Investing involves risks, including possible loss of principal. Any economic forecast set forth in the podcast may not develop as predicted and are subject to change. References to markets, asset classes, and sectors are generally regarding the corresponding market index. All indexes are unmanaged and cannot be invested into directly. Index performance is not indicative of the performance of any investment and do not reflect fees, expenses, or sales charges. All performance reference is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All information referenced in the podcast is believed to be from reliable sources. However, we make no representation as to its completeness or accuracy. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor and broker-dealer, member FINRA and SIPC. Insurance products are offered through LPL or its licensed affiliates. To the extent you are receiving investment advice from a separately registered independent investment advisor that is not an LPL affiliate, please note LPL makes no representation with respect to such entity. If your financial professional is located at a bank or credit union, please note that the bank or credit union is not registered as a broker-dealer or investment advisor. Registered representatives of LPL may also be employees of the bank or credit union. These products and services are being offered through LPL or its affiliates, which are separate entities from and not affiliates of the bank or credit union. Securities and insurance offered through LPL or its affiliates are not insured by the FDIC or NCUAA or any other government agency, not bank or credit union guarantee guaranteed, not bank or credit union deposits or obligations, and may lose value.